Hello to my regulars and to those who are visiting for the first time. Welcome to this episode of Hit the Mahogany. Japan just now is actually running a competition to ask 20 to 39 year olds for creative ideas on how to revitalise the drinks industry over there. So in a sign of solidarity, I thought why not? Let's join that. So on this episode, we are going to be doing a Japanese cocktail. Now the Japanese cocktail itself really doesn't actually have anything to do with Japan. This was invented, I think it was around about 1860 by Jerry Thomas and it was in his book, uh, How, to Mix, How to Mix Drinks. He published that in 1862. And the reason it was called the Japanese cocktail, allegedly, was that the first delegation, UN delegation to the US from Japan, used to visit his bar. And they'd have a great time there, and hence, serving drinks, a few Japanese people, why not? Let's call the drink a uh, Japanese cocktail. But why? You know, just why is Japan actually running this competition just now? Well, the pandemic had a huge impact on the drinks industry, like many other places around the world as well. Uh, but more interestingly, they, they have an older population and they actually have a, a declining birth rate as well. So there's less youth in that uh, space there. Now, I think the idea they're trying to get is just to get regular people to just, you know, people just to drink a little bit more. But of course, there's a possibility it might slip into that uh, salary man perspective. And if you don't know what a salary man is, look it up. But it's a little bit derogatory, actually, in the way it's actually called. Uh, I've been over to Japan a few times and I've seen what... I, I, I've seen the, 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 the individuals that are identified as salary men. Is it fair? I don't know. But generally what it is, it's somebody who is working for a large corporation and really they are investing their whole life into that company. Nice black suit, mostly black suit, white shirt. Uh, but it's not just the work, they stay for long hours. Uh, actually, some of it, I, I believe, is potentially related to, you know, you don't leave work before your boss. So if your boss, if there's three bosses up there, you can't leave until you, you know, if he, if your boss can't leave until his boss can't leave, until his boss leaves, until his boss can't leave, blah, 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 you're going to be there for quite a while. But they are also expected to socialise quite heavily as well after work. So there's a lot of heavy drinking that goes on. So usually in the evenings, a little bit later in the night, Sometimes the, the underground uh, in Tokyo, for example, you can see a lot of uh, people who have, uh, let's just say, they're a little bit worse for wear, needless to say. Uh, uh, but they're all very well dressed, actually, so it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Most of them, hopefully most of them get home safe anyway. So anyway, salary men. Uh, but of course, you don't want to have asking the whole population to start drinking more and having that... Uh, uh, that uh, persona of sat heavy drinking salary men just uh, going crazy all over the place. All right, enough of that. Shall we uh, make the Japanese cocktail? Very, very simple. Cognac, you get away with just, you know, regular brandy, cognacs from the cognac region. Uh, we have orgeat. Now this is a, now you can make your own orgeat syrup yourself. Most of them are almond flavoured. You'll actually see them getting used heavily in tiki drinks. Uh, but this is almond ones. Sometimes you can get pistachio ones and you can make them yourselves as well. And then we've got uh, good old faithful Angostura bitters. Sounds very simple. How does it actually turn out? All right, let's get it knocked up. So I'm going to make up knocked up. Uh, let's whip one up. Uh, I don't know if that's even better. I'm going to probably whip somebody up first before I knock. Uh, I don't know. All right. It's two ounces of uh, cognac for each of your drinks. Now, I'm going to make two, I like to do. One for me and one for whoever else in the household. And hold on, let me just check. Anybody else here? Nope. So that's going to be two for me then, apparently. All right, two ounces of cognac for each one. Give this just a quick mix up. I love this. Oh, just like almond essence, anything that's kind of got that almond scent to it. Uh, so it's a half ounce for each one. So that's going to be one ounce in total. That's it. Now from the liquids, that's all that you're actually putting in. Of course, 
You can make it, if you want to make it larger, you can do so. Uh, just keep the ratios the same. And then two dashes of, two to three dashes of Angostura bitters. One, two, three, four. I have another one for good luck. All right. Um, I think that competition I was just thinking there, is it called Saka Viva or something? Uh, that's the competition the Japanese government is actually running uh, for people to come up with ideas. I don't know what you win actually. I didn't read as far into that. Uh, all right, shaken, not stirred. Oh, that actually, now that now that I said that, we did actually, there's one of the hotels in uh, Japan which was used uh, for one of the Sean Connery films back in the 1960s, actually, and I can't remember what it is. I went to the hotel. Uh, blooming heck. Ah, check it out. You know what? Pause one second. That's, that's annoying me. I've got to try and remember what it is. All right. So it is in the movie uh, You Only Live Twice. That one was back in 1967. Uh, and the hotel is the new Otani Tokyo in Chiyoda Ward uh, and it was where the enemy organisation Sato Chemicals uh, was used as their uh, uh, the hotel called the main uh, enemy organisation you know, uses the hotel word as their hideout so that was their hideout there anyway I've been there as well that was, that was nice alright let's get this shaken up now okay Done. All right. Nice little bit of dilution. Chilled. Let's get this one poured out. Now, depending on the orgeat that you're using, you might get different opacities or opacity of the, uh, the drink itself because you can make it yourself. Uh, that's nice though. You can see how the cognac has coloured this. The glass, you can use a cocktail glass, you can use a coupe. Just happen to like these and says, no, they're smaller, smaller drinks, so this actually just looks good there. All right, done, done, done. Garnish, twist of lemon. And just squeeze that over the top. Oh, that's what I love there. I like seeing the oils coming out of that. We'll just give it a little twist again and drop that in. Here's the next one. Squeeze. Bang. You see a lot of videos where uh, folks, you just heat up the surface of the peel and it is oil. And then when you spray it, it'll actually uh, go, boom, it'll give you a little flame there. Okay, here is the Japanese cocktail. Let's give this a little taste then. I know what this one's. I've tasted this one before. It's just so surprising. It's, there's so many flavours actually going on in there. I'm trying to work out how to best describe it. It's like a little bit of an old, uh, no, not an old fashioned, I'm trying to think. If it had lemon juice in it, and there are some riffs out there, it's like a sidecar without that sourness. Now, Orja is sweet but the bitters tone it down a lot. So it's nice. The mouthfeel is rich. There's a lot of body because of the consistency and the viscosity of that. So it's actually got really nice mouthfeel. Some people might not like it. I like it though. And there's a, there's an earthiness, earthy cognac. There's fruit coming through there as well. There's almost like a, a vanilla hint coming through and that's probably because of the cognac, the wood flavors coming through. And then just that almond and the nuttiness from the orge as well. And the bitters just, they just temper everything and it brings it all together. It's, it's, it's very simple, but it's actually got complex flavors to it as well. And it's well worth one trying. Seriously, it's actually a very, very freaking simple drink to actually make. Hmm. That goes down really well. All right. Okay, everybody. Waxing lyrical once more. Okay, everybody. Uh, 
enjoy your Japanese cocktail and uh, a little bit of solidarity for the, the Japanese that are being asked to drink more, but hopefully drinking responsibly. Cheers.